106.1 Next Radio, this is The Big Talk. My name is Kandra Mgume, and uh, well, I welcome all of you watching in Uganda and around the world, and uh, thank you for joining us. Today on the show, we look at uh, the meeting that happened between President Jerome Seveni and the traders. What exactly was discussed? What was the compromise? We hear, as of today, that uh, the traders will open their shops pending a meeting that will discuss the details. Well, lucky for us. We have, uh, of course, uh, the um, man who was uh, in um, the meeting, who was also in the eye of the storm. Tadias Musoke, who is the chairperson of Kasita Uganda, good to have you on the show. Uh, good morning. I'm happy to be hosted today. Night, uh, ni nice, uh, nice, uh, nice uh, listening. Yeah. I know we are going to digest and then I uh, clarify on several issues. Right. Uh, I, I, I believe it's going to be a very Last time issue. there was a statement out you do not agree with it. We hope that this one issued by the president on his official Twitter account or X, uh, you will agree. But we'll get into the detail okay. of that in just a bit. We also have uh, the taxman, Peter Tosigamkama, Supervisor Domestic Taxes, Uganda Revenue Authority. Good to have you on the show. Good to, good to be here. Thank you so much, Canary. Uh, good morning to all the listeners and viewers out there. We also thought it is important to mm. throw some analysis into it. Mark Mutumba, tax policy analyst, CRTN Uganda. Good to have you on the show. Uh, thank you so much, Kanari. Uh, and I'm very privileged to be here. I represent both uh, CRTN Uganda and the Tax Justice Alliance, which is hosted by CRTN. Uh, so uh, good morning to everyone that is watching us and listening in. And uh, we really hope that the uh, discussions that we are going to be having are going to shape the understanding and the policy framework around the uh, taxation. So right. Let us stay tuned in, tuned in and then have a very fruitful discussion. I'm honored to be having you gentlemen on the show. Um, Mr. Msoke, talk to us. What was at Entebbe yesterday? Mm. Describe for us the mood yesterday it was in a the very room. great moment for the traders uh, because the traders always were yearning to meet the president. Uh, unfortunately, the number was limited. Uh, but because of a great solidarity and the concern of the traders, mm. they had to stay around State House almost up to midnight when we left State House. Uh, but the good thing is that uh, when we made several presentations, because I, had, I led the delegation with several ministers in presence and agencies where URA, Commissioner General, and the team were fully represented, the Ministry of Trade, Minister of Finance, and then the Minister of Kampala. But this time, unfortunately, we are led by the Ministry of Kampala, uh, Honorable Mr. Kabanda, because of the initiative which she, she initiated, because of the love of the traders and the concern which were being raised by the traders. You are Kasita Uganda. Why would you be represented by the Ministry of Kampala? Because, you know, we have we have a challenge. Most of the ministers who are stationed in several ministries, mm. they are not effective. It's like they don't uh, take the concerns of Uganda and serious. Uh, that's why when, that's by the way what brings demonstrations and chaos sometimes. Uh, but uh, for us, when we are trying to, to champion our advocacy, we try to contact all the possible offices. Like we took several petitions uh, to the Speaker of Parliament, but the response was not so, so timely. But you find that when we went to the leader of opposition, the Speaker had to react, and our concerns were tabled in Parliament. Uh, that's why even we made a presentation on the Finance and Trade Committee. And then later, Later on, the Ministry also of Finance had to champion negotiations and later releasing. But how did this thing start? Mm. It started some time back uh, when traders raised several concerns and petitions to Kasita. Uh, when we tried to contact the, the ministries, the response wasn't so good. So I had to contact Tajati Namiaru. Just imagine I went to Chambogo. That's how the that's how desperate the, yes, the that's traders how were. were. Mm. So I had to contact you resorted to I wouldn't call them an official channels because she had the office of the national chairman of the NRM, but that's how desperate you are that the no, official but, but channels but, but she was so cooperative. Mm. And then also she fixed an appointment with the president uh, last month. 
So when we met with the president, I presented our concerns and promised to meet the traders this month uh, with a bigger number. And then uh, he assigned the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Finance and URA to make sure they meet the traders on 8th. Exactly that was done at the Kakati, at the Kasita Secretariat, where the meeting, the, pres uh, the traders attended in bigger numbers, and their concerns were clearly presented to the permanent secretary. Unfortunately, because of several assignments, it has taken long without response. So they thought that their concern, uh, they were taken like for granted. So we as leaders, we had a lot of pressure to contain the traders on to demonstrate. Right. Uh, even they were starting accusing us. Maybe you guys, when you went to State House, you got a brown envelope. You ate. <laughs> 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 because, you know, the perception mm. of Uganda now, now nowadays is like that. But eating. given the fact that you're a leader, uh, you're supposed to champion the concern of the traders. Right. Uh, so luckily enough, uh, when more players came on board, we tried to see that even you saw MPs, you saw uh, the tax guys also championing the concern of the traders, the border borders, because the moment mm. we demonstrate, all sectors are affected. Right. So we are it's unfortunate <coughs> that we had to demonstrate, but I want to clearly state that, that what were the concerns? Yes, but, but also take us to the room where you met. Talk to us about what the ambience was like. Talk to us wo who was in the meeting. In, in the meeting, uh, the traders, we were assigned like uh, 100 traders mm. who attended. And different associations were fully represented. Uh, we have no several association uh, now in Kampala. And also we, as Kasita Uganda, we had representation from Barara. We had representation from Mwende, Hoima. We had Jinja. We had Alua. We had, uh, we had the Guru. We had the Mukono, Wakiso, but they all, all major towns mm. were represented. Uh, that's why this demonstration wasn't only in Kampala, but even other major towns were affected because right. the concern was totally affecting the traders. So what were the concerns? The concern was about the VAT, VAT threshold, and then we had... Uh, uh Tadius, al allow me to take you back a little bit. Apart from Kasita, who else was in that meeting? Uh, we have uh, th another gentleman called Karanda John. He's, he's heading the FUTA. It's the Federation for Traders. Mm. Uh, but Kasita is not part of that federation. And then we had another association, uh, which is called Kata. Uh, then uh, it's headed by Katongole. What the is Kata? Uh, Kata is a Kampala City tra Arcaders Asso Traders Association. And then we had Utea. Uh, we had Kafo. Uh, so all those are s associations. Mm. And then for Casita, we have also other associations which subscribe to Casita, like Mukono Business Community, mm. like Alua Business Community. We have Ataya. That association brings together all the traders who deal in garments and textiles and other associations. An issue that was uh, but also Chamber of Commerce, agenda. Chamber of Commerce wasn't represented and Private Sector Foundation wasn't represented. Okay. In terms of uh, government, uh, apart from the president, I also understand that uh, there are political leaders that were in that meeting. The political leaders, we had the Minister of Kampala, uh, we had the Minister for Trade, uh, we had the Minister for Finance, mm. uh, we had uh, Honore Banite, uh, we had uh, the Commissioner General, and uh, also Adyatina Miaro was there. Mm. Uh, so that's uh, Uhuru? Uhuru, Uhuru, yes, also Uhuru was there because mm. Uhuru, he didn't, uh, he wasn't included on this delegation as a political leader. Mm. But Uhuru is the trader. So the concerns which are affecting the trader, mm. yes, he was represented because he's our member. Mm. And always in several meetings where the traders uh, have several conferences or any, any engagement, okay. Uhuru is part of Mr. that. Mr. Okay, what was your point of compromise? At what point did you agree that today morning you should open up the shops? For sure, the president had see, took our concern so serious uh, that even he had to stop the harsh uh, harshness from from my comrade there. Those guys <laughs> are very tough. <laughs> you don't even want to look. Uh, at you find that when you are coming, 
you know, at first, as Kasita, we had a partnership with URA Reason. Mm. There is no way you can sustain a business when you, know you don't meet your tax obligation. But, and we are moving with them so well, educating, sensitizing. Mm. But when they reached about enforcing, we tried to tell them that approach will bring problems. Uh, because we, as leaders, we have some obligation to make sure that the city and other towns are, are peaceful. For sure, no, no government agents wants that such a demonstration to happen. Uh, so we commit and make sure that at times we try to contain our comrades. So we assist them to give them feedback mm. because we are on ground. But you cannot believe they ignored our concerns. They thought guns. They thought corruption because even the, the, the security people were forcing to, to be paid by mm. our traders. Mm. That inconvenience, even checking a small box, checking a here. But our, our members were telling even the bags for ladies. So the situation was totally unbearable. So what did the president so say? He has stopped that, uh, all that. That enforcement should be a little more kinder. Uh, that they should come for with for the meantime, that they should come with flowers and balloons. For the meantime. He stopped that because there are other avenues and strategies which URA can, can, can implement to make sure taxes can be good. But, but by the way, our traders are willing to pay taxes, but how do you handle them? People, are, people, people have been sanctioned to audits by NSSF, mm. but how come they are not complaining? By that approach for NSSF, there is no your, your client. They come, they visit you, they engage you. Uh, they, you they, feel raise they, they raise the concerns. They leave you with the resolutions mm. for you to comply. Probably because but but prob for them, they think they're supposed to just force. Mr. Msoke, probably because uh, NSF is not, is not tax, and at the end of the day, whatever money they are collecting is benefiting. But, but, but yeah, it's uh, an obligation. Yes. But we are companies by the NSSF. money going to meet at a retirement age. NSSF has serious mandates. Mm. If you don't comply, also they become harder. But the engagement which you are a had, they were not enough. Okay, real quick into the resolutions by uh, President. Uh, uh, then about fines and penalties, mm. uh, the president said those should stop. Just imagine they have sold just one cup bottle of water mm. just at one thousand, because you haven't issued an e receipt, and then you are penalized six million. That was totally unacceptable. The president stopped that. But yes, the president cannot stop what is in the law. I think but what you meant to say is that he waived off but, but he has those that who have defaulted. Uh, uh, power. He has that executive power. I'm looking power. at his statement here, and uh, he did not say that uh, p people should not be penalized. It's in the law. It's not something and that, that can be waived, no, wa waived off. Even um, when you based on the statement which mm. even Minister of Finance released, the penalties were waived off. So the president decide, uh, ordered let URA stop penalizing the traders suspended suspended the tra the, tra the penalties in the meantime for the meantime mm. and then even the vat is uh, is analyzing and is going to consult to come up with a final position on 7 because we are meeting the president on 7 at kololo in bigger numbers because also we raised the concern that most of our members could not access state house the if this issue so, so for vat that, that was um Reducing from 18 to 16 percent, right? Uh, not that, but even there are so many concerns. You know, let me give a, 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 an example. Mm. Gentlemen, I'm sorry, but I think it's where important that we listen in. Where, where the man was in state house I, I, I want to give this example so mm. that even our listeners and viewers can understand the impact of that mm. to a businessman from, to, from Chikubo. When you buy just one bag of sugar from Kachira, for example, at 205,000, then the factory will add VAT. That VAT will make the price to be 250. Mm. So when you take that back to Chikubo and you add just like 3,000 profit, uh, the system was adding another 45,000 to that bag. So almost the cost price would be around 300,000. So the argument was it makes the commodity price unaffordable or expensive. Mm. So the president's argument was why can't you are a, because this you need the VAT, why can't you charge that VAT just from the factory or entry point? 
And by that was the position of the traders. And by the way, uh, you find that when the president mentioned this, almost the whole engagement, <laughs> the excitement was so much uh, that the president had realized the concern of the traders. But he told us. Which, some, which, uh, which is something that um, <laughs> all government agencies. But, but the say. president, you know, is a very smart uh, gentleman. He mm. told us, ah, you traders, you are so excited. Use the Luganda word, mm. uh, let me consult mm. and engage the technical team mm. and to make sure that he promises going to meet them this month mm. on 24th to harmonize, to see if they are charged from, the, the if, if VAT is charged from the factory, can it have that impact on the collection of, uh, of uh, revenue? Because the concern was that it inconveniences that in, that out. Mm. Eh? So even the cost implication. So the president thought that if you charge just at the factory level, there are no these refunds, there are no what, so it could ease the tax correction. But that one, he promised he will give us a final position on 7. Uh, furthermore, uh, the president uh, the president concerned was about the Chinese who were vending when he uh, said that that's totally not true because the enforcement team would make sure if someone is licensed is this supervised to make sure he operates under the mandate or the guidelines mm. which they which are streamlined so well in in uh, in, in, in that uh, license so because the concern for the traders they were scared that if the government doesn't intervene all businesses are going to collapse the Chinese are the manufacturers, they open shops, but they're not even Chinese. Let me, let me term them manufacturers, because we have seen even local factories doing the same. Mm. Uh, they do the distribution, they do the wholesale, they retail. So you cannot compete with the manufacturer. And by that was even the concern, which realized with that, because now if Kachila can sell at 250, no one could buy a bag of sugar from Chikubo. Mm. It's rather you go to Kachira because even you could sell one bag. So uh, that one also it there is the way to both excitement so with it's uh, it's our members. Just saying that um, the president agreed in most of the points that you most of mo had. most of the points by the way we agreed. The only the only pending issues were true because the president has has a concern of protecting the local industries, mm. mainly for the garments. So the 35% and uh, the, the system, the $3.5 <coughs> per kilo, uh, that one is pending on garments. But for the textile, totally realized that the concern of the traders, it was right. If the Chikuvo member, no, if the Ham member, and then Chiembe member, when I'm buying a textile, I pay taxes. Why if a Chinese comes and is, is importing textile, which is the raw material, he doesn't pay tax? So there the president uh, realized there was a mistake which was made. Mm. And that device, that should be revised to, to enable also Ugandans who are into tailoring because also they are manufacturers. They add value to that raw material so right. that they can compete with the, with the Chinese. Don't know which was concerned about the garment mm. and the jeans. So the system for the kilo and the 35 percent is still they are, they, they, are rev they are studying and analyzing, but I'm sure on seventh the president will have his final position. And even that, mm. so all the concerns we agreed up. It's just two points which are pending: the VAT and the 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 customs values. All right, um, that's a very good context, uh, honestly. Um, you've you've done us justice by taking us into the room and what was discussed. VAT threshold, 150 million turnover annually. Yes, our, our proposal was can it be to I don't need, can it be raised to one billion? Mm. Uh, but uh, the minister is saying, "Hello, you gentlemen, how will Uganda survive if you don't want to pay taxes?" Mm. Uh, so their proposal was around 500 million. Whose proposal? Do you have an engagement with the Minister of Finance? What was the President's say on that? Uh, he's still analyzing and consulting. When I come back to you, I'll ask the question, really, what is the 7th May meeting going to change, um, if anything, uh, was not really conclusively 
um, added on on the meeting yesterday at State House. But many thanks. Um, l let me now get uh, to you, uh, Mark. What do you think of um, what was discussed yesterday in the president's meeting with the traders? <coughs> Thank you, Kanai. But um, the president's points uh, elaborate uh, some key issues that we need to pay attention to because for a very long time, uh, you'll find that uh, trade and taxation, when the, the policies have been uh, being formulated, mm -hmm. they've been uh, formulated in, in, s in a sort of isolation where you find that uh, the policies that are supposed to govern the, the way trade is supposed to be conducted, the way investment is supposed to be uh, like attracted, uh, are not speaking the same language of what the tax policy uh, could be speaking. So you find that uh, it is actually a very good move for the president to first hold back, to analyze and read uh, and see what the situation is because uh, the revision of the threshold uh, could actually lead to a reduction in revenue collection because uh, I, I think I was consulting with uh, with Peter here and he told me uh, as as it stands for now VAT collections around 3.5 trillion. So if if the president is to rush into this like he said Okumuto Meza, we may end up uh, losing a lot of money. Uh, also, we need to pay attention to the fact that most of the revenue collections that we have as a country come from indirect taxes. The area of direct taxes, you'll find that we have very few people who actually contribute towards it. So you'll find that because of the large informal sector, government has resorted to going for the indirect taxes. That because it's the easy, it's the easy, uh, like it's a hanging fruit that can e easily be gotten. So the proposal by the the traders uh, has a flaw in it because value addition tax in its inherent nature is not supposed to be borne by the trader but rather by the consumer. So the proposal for them to take it to towards the area of uh, just the manufacturers and maybe at the entry point when the traders are having it has that flow of if they disrupt the value chain for uh, the tax value chain, it could have issues. However, they have a point as well because you'll find that because the tax education has not necessarily given it to them to appreciate and understand how the, the tax is supposed to be working. They'll have that concern. But the fact that also as government, it, the, given its different pressures, is also concentrating on just the small group of taxpayers and also concentrating on on, on what comes out uh, from the uh, from VAT mm. and maybe excise duty. You find that they're also constrained. But they okay. have a point. L l let me ask you, because I know you're a tax policy analyst, but yes. allow me to drag you into the politics. Mm. Do you think that yesterday's meeting was just politics as opposed to... <laughs> b b b b there's nothing conclusive. I'm looking at the oh. statement here, and, and the president says that allow me research more and consult the technocrats on all the concerns they raised. Why didn't he consult the technocrats before? Because the concerns had been there, mm. and I am sure he was briefed about the concerns before the meeting. Why is he consulting after the meeting? Uh, uh, majorly because when you're looking at policy issues, they have an impact on what the uh, trade practice is going to be. Mm. Whether we like it or not, they will always have that impact on it. So by him doing the consultation, one, they, uh, I, I'm, I'm confident of the fact that the ministry has a modeling sort of like they have a model that they actually follow. For instance, if as to reduce VAT, to what extent is Uganda going to suffer revenue loss? Mm. And if that revenue loss is incurred, where am I going to get that money from? So they're looking at two parameters of, if we are to give the traders what they want, how are we going to survive as a country? Because I think on his Twitter, on his ex uh, handle, he also expressed it. Mm. If the people do not want to pay the taxes, who's going to pay the taxes? Mm. So that gets back also to the fundamentals of tax. If you do not pay the tax, mm. as sure as hell, someone else is going to pay that tax. In his own word, he says, traders should answer the question, do we want to build our country, Uganda, or other countries by trading in goods produced by them? But do you find it surprising that the statement from the Minister of Finance after the meeting with the traders is almost similar to that of the president? No, not really. After I, the meeting. I, I, I don't think anyone that is that has been following this should be surprised because uh, we are looking at an economy that is constrained. Mm. We have a very large fiscal deficit. That means the, the expenditure that we have as a country cannot be commensurate to 
the revenue that we're actually collecting. Right. So them giving that kind of answer is something that is supposed to to help them evaluate the trade-offs. If we have to give up this tax, how are we going to benefit as a country? How are we going to continue running the, the country? So it goes back to the revenue cycle as well. Mm. If we are to mobilize this amount of money, how are we going to allocate it and how are we going to utilize it? So th that comes to that element of where they have a standoff that needs to be addressed without rushing it in, uh, with, without rushing it to appease the traders and not also rushing it to still use the strong arm to collect the revenue. So right. the statement is not as surprising. It's not surprising. All right, let me get to Peter, uh, the taxman. Peter, we want to understand from your side, when you waive up these penalties, uh, really, how much revenue are you losing? Does it work in your favor? But also, you are supposed to be supporting these businesses mm. and not necessarily milking them um, until you make blood out of them. Isn't it honestly um, just right that you waive off these penalties and um, you know encourage them to do business so that you can tax them later at a later stage? Uh, thank you, Canary. Now, uh, uh, from uh, the gentleman's uh, submissions, at, at least I'm happy to understand that it seems uh, the issues that were raised to the president uh, when he gave you an ear to and uh, and also from my interaction with uh, a few traders out there i've gotten to understand that uh, one traders do not have an issue with ifris itself i stand to be corrected yes uh, even from his submission there's everything wrong with ifris uh, one <laughs> one uh, <laughs> what unless, what unless, unless he chose not to hear no but, uh, one one thing that saying. came out came out clearly mm. there was an information gap mm. that one came out clearly and the public was misinterpreting ifris as a new tax and uh, of course as you are a well partly we are to blame because we have to make sure that at least we disseminate information clearly and accurately to the public so that they can understand what it is that when we say ifris what does it mean? Uh, and uh, al al allow mm. me, um, and, mm. and this I'm requesting 30 seconds of your mm. time. Thaddeus, from the traders' perspective, the three 33,000 uh, people that um, qualified for VAT, I don't think that um, they misinterpret it that uh, if it's apart from the members of the public online mm. and ever, mm. I don't think that the traders mis <coughs> misinterpret that it's a new tax. No, they don't, they don't, uh, they don't misinterpret it. But the fact is that uh, the traders are mainly in Chikubo. Mm. They are against IFRIS. If they cannot operate the machine, the level of education, and even there are so many challenges. There is a lot of Kuyiriba, a lot of Kweiya. So mm. the turnaround uh, you know, time is uh, you does no not no permit By the way, for IFRIS, it even it can, uh, it, can, it, uh, it, can, it can accept it has brought several challenges. Mm. They have kept on trying to upgrade, improve, because there is no way, even the president raised this. If the system is still new, give chance for technology adoption. Mm. Then secondly, improve, avoid the penalties. Just imagine if the machine has some fault and then you are penalized with 30 million. So even the approach is totally discouraging. And, and even the way it was packaged. Because URA, when it was introducing this system, by the way, it was contacted. Mm. to make sure that we champion and interest our traders to go on the system. Mm. But if you are a, a bring such a system and you are a trader, you say, oh, how comes now the URA man thinks he's, he wants to know whatever is happening in my, in my business? The secondly, why was in the Ministry of Trade, why didn't the Ministry of Trade introduce this system as a management system, business management system? Because for sure it's a business management system, mm. but the interest of you are is just to correct taxes. That's where the problem is. They and do the not approach. care about the. Let me give another scenario, mm. like filing returns. Filing returns is a very good approach, where it helps a businessman internalize your business mm. and understand your business. But for them, they when they when when they're trying to talk to the traders, say, we want to see how much you're supposed to pay. They're interested in on taxes, mm. but their approaches, which may not be so direct. But even the government can also get the targets. But how do you package your project? Right. How do mm -hmm. you interest your, your possible stakeholder?
to be on board. That's where the challenge is. Okay. Mm. Peter, yeah. the tax man, <laughs> definitely there's a challenge uh, with, with IFRIS. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Mm. Uh, now, <coughs> sorry, uh, where I was coming from to, to tell the public that uh, there was a misconception out there when it is indeed true that even what sparked off almost each and every everything uh, considering the social media wash, considering uh, the fact that even the local person uh, at the LC1 is also striking, it was the fact that they had not understood this IFRIS. That is where I was coming from. Now, uh, I'm happy to understand that well, traders now are not understanding IFRIS as another tax. But uh, if, if they are getting it as uh, a system that we brought in place, now that is a plus on the URAs, on the URA side. But, Canary, to, to understand this whole concept, it is uh, very important that we also understand VAT. Because he mentioned something to do with uh, having VAT at the point of production, and that that is it. Uh, we need to look at two things. Uh, what our traders need to understand, uh, there are two things that uh, in uh, tax that you you may need to familiarize yourself with. We have the tax burden and the tax impact. Now, these two things are different. Now, when we look at VAT, the tax burden is supposed to be felt by the final consumer. Now, the challenge is coming in now with the tax impact on the traders because we are telling them, look here. You're the people that are supposed to help us, to help the government collect this VAT. I, in other words, these are the people that are helping us. They are helping the government <coughs> sorry, collect VAT uh, by charging it uh, uh, through the value chain. And uh, also, uh, like my colleague had hinted on it, uh, VAT is uh, a consumption tax. And to understand it very well, you need to look at the concept, how do we charge this VAT? If I am a trader operating a shop in Chikubo, what is the impact? What impact does this VAT have on me? Now, the biggest challenge that we have, uh, most of our traders have not understood that. And the fact that we run a self-assessment regime whereby someone assesses themselves and files a return, it has been a little bit of a challenge for us to enforce compliance because we give the traders the first hand. Please go ahead and declare your business transactions. But in simple terms, what is the trader supposed to do? If you are a businessman and you are your annual turnover is 150 million and above, you're registered for VAT, you must familiarize yourself with two simple concepts of output VAT and input VAT. Which now, the traders are saying <coughs> it's <now> extremely <coughs> unfair. Now, I'm trying, let me try to explain this. But it doesn't uh, make sense. Now, let me try to explain this. Uh, in simple terms, we are just looking at your purchases and your sales. Now, if you're a VAT registered person, now this tax burden at any one point, it should not come to you if we work together. Because we are simply saying, help us. When you go and purchase some of your products from the factory, these factories are going to charge you VAT. Now, when you come to your shop, you're selling. Whether you're selling to a wholesaler or you're selling to a retailer, please also charge VAT, so long as you're dealing with a taxable supplies. Now, at the end of the month, what are you supposed to do? Mm. You're supposed to compare your sales and your purchases. Look at how much you've charged and how much you have been charged, and you balance off, and you remit to URA the difference. If it so happens that you find that they charged you much more money than indeed what you charged, then that is a plus. It is actually one of the incentives that a VAT registered taxpayer will benefit from. You are at liberty now to claim your input VAT from URA. Now, we, from our interactions, one, we have also understood that some of these taxpayers now they want to be the ones to bear the burden. They want to be the ones to bear the burden, not the final consumer. All right. And let me let me ask this. Do you have a feeling <coughs> that uh, <coughs> perhaps the traders who have been taking home VAT as profit? Mm. Yes, we do. And I'll give you a live part part example. Of, part of the reasons why they are against IFRIS is mm. that. Let me give you a live example. 
you have a shop for example you 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 rent a shop in town and the landlord the fact that that is a commercial building the annual turnover is above 150 million the landlord is supposed to be charging you vat but what has been happening some of the landlords mm. they go ahead and declare and give you a receipt now to our surprise some of these receipts even do not bear amounts mm. someone gives a tenant a receipt that you have paid rent without any amount now what does this mean this means that at the end of the month at the end of the year this landlord is going to declare what he wants to mm -hmm. declare now it leaves you are a uh, one in in that revenue gap two this person who is renting from you the tenant he has a business that he's running now when he's calculating his taxes by the time he re he, he arrives at the chargeable income you're all aware that we allow some expenses some of the expenses that we allow this trader is rent that he has given this landlord. Mm. Now, what happens if this tenant does not have proof that indeed he paid rent of 400000 to the landlord? Now, you see how it is trickling down, even to the common, common person. Now, without that receipt, it's going to be very difficult for this taxpayer to declare in his return. Because the moment he declares in his return that he paid $1 million, how do you expect you are a, for example, now, to take that return and verify that indeed this tenant paid 400,000 in risk this. Now, systems like IFRIS, when you look at the operation of IFRIS, for example, I am the landlord. I have issued this tenant with a receipt of an invoice, IFRIS invoice of 1 million. Now, it entirely means that even when this tenant is filing his annual income tax returns, it's going to be very easy for him to claim this rent that he has given you. Mm. At the end of the day, even you, the landlord, <coughs> now it means you're going to give us the accurate information. We shall move away from where we are now estimating. Now, the biggest challenge that we are having, and some of the taxpayers out there cry out this, he may not say it, that URA estimates taxes. But why do we estimate? It's because of such gaps that are I within the chain. You're saying that the traders, so that, that, <coughs> that Tadias and, and his <coughs> colleagues are not honest? Some of the traders, to be honest with you, they are not honest. They are non-compliant in that regard. Because the information that they give us... Do you find that strange among the traders? I think <coughs> it's in everyone. If, if I import a car, the mm. one thing I would want to do is ask a lawyer, how do I avoid this tax? Exactly. Now... Uh, I'm trying to show you why this system is beneficial to both parties. Mm. Now, when such system comes in, because when you look at the operation of IFRIS, IFRIS is, it gives real-time information to URA. That is the fact. Now, the moment you raise an invoice, you're giving it to your tenant. That means URA has gotten that information and accurate information because the tenant, one, if you give him an invoice that is less, he's also going to ask you, I gave you four million. Why are you giving me a receipt of one million? Because uh, this happens out there. All Someone right. pays and mm. they are given a receipt that is less. We know it is human nature, yes, but we are saying, look here, for us to devolve this country together, we want also to be fair and make sure that we are assessing and collecting tax that is accurate, mm. that is commensurate to your business. But how do we do it? Yes, you're the person who knows your business very well. But sometimes you have identified so many revenue gaps, and he will bear me witness, we always carry out compliance advisories with the taxpayers, even before we go ahead and assess any of the discrepancies that we may find in the declaration. But some of the discrepancies that you find, you find someone, for example, the tenant is claiming to have paid you money, $4 million, but you as the landlord, you're saying that you, re you received two million from the tenant. Mm. You see now such such scenarios. So who is lying to who? Now when IFRIS comes in, uh, some of these some of these challenges, it's going to address them very easily. The other thing that probably I can hint on, um, we have had a challenge when uh, we look at the tax burden, he may not uh, have mentioned it, but there have been complaints that uh, this tax burden is being filled by very few individuals okay mm. let's just hold on to your point let's mm. take a break <coughs> when we return we'll return with that and how to widen the tax base but most importantly 
Apart from politics, the president is meeting the traders again on the 7th of May. What I'll ask you, gentlemen, is what is that meeting with the president and the traders really going to solve that yesterday didn't? All that after this short commercial break. Only on, only on Next Radio. Next Radio. We're live on Next Radio, we're live on Afromobile and live on NBS Television. My name is Kanaram Gume. Today morning, we're looking at uh, the details of the meeting between the traders and President Yoram Seveni. President Yoram Seveni is slated to meet the traders again on the 7th of May at Kololo Independence Grounds. What exactly really will be resolved on that meeting? Is he going to receive any new information that he didn't receive yesterday? In the studios this morning... I'm hosting Tadia Sumsoke, who is the chairperson of uh, Kampala City Traders Association, Kasita, Uganda. Mark Mutumba, tax policy analyst, Siatini, Uganda. Peter Presgamkama, supervisor, domestic taxes, Uganda Revenue Authority. Tadia, let me get to you. Really, apart from really playing politics, what is the president going to hear or resolve on the 7th of May meeting? Do you have hope that... Because this is temporary, whatever resolution was, as long as the resolution is here um, in, in um, brief, is going to meet technocrats from the Ministry of Finance and ERA on the 24th of April for further consultations on issues raised. Why didn't he consult before the meeting? President Seven will meet all traders on the 7th of May at Kololo. Number three, all penalties are suspended by ERA until items one and two above are concluded. Then the traders' leaders agree to reopen their businesses as items one to three continue. We, as federal leaders, we decided to, to approach our concerns in the political move. That's why we have been always trying to request the president uh, to meet the traders in bigger numbers. In Uganda, if you don't apply the political move, <laughs> you may end up suffocating or going out of business. Uh, given the fact that uh, the president also is political, mm. And by the way, when uh, you get a chance and interact so closely with the technical mm -hmm. team, most of the people are complaining about these technical teams. They are just enriching themselves. They are so corrupt. Even mm -hmm. where they have tried to protect some investors for personal interest. By the way, I, I want to, well, when you recall so well, the president was complaining to some, even some of the ministers forcefully requesting for shares in for, for from from companies even by the some are now enlisted on payrolls we know that uh, when we share you know we are doing business also with these chinese the indians they tell us even they show us sometimes the payrolls but they fear uh, that the payrolls may bring them problems because in business you're supposed to have to make sure that you have those good fathers eh, where you have issues they can assist and by the way uh, to try to maneuver through some challenges uh, so the fact is that uh, on 7th we are aware it will have more fruits to the business community a reason uh, that uh, i've attended a several engagement uh, on the presidential ceo forum why the president decided to strengthen the presidential ceo forum so that he gets feedback feedback from the private sector and because all government agencies are there. Unfortunately, it was overtaken by the manufacturers. Mm. So the traders were suffocating. Because even we told the president, what's wrong with having an industrial policy where, is I where it can transform Musoke from an ordinary trader to a manufacturer? Because like maybe like what uh, our, pa our spokesperson, Haji Sasechito, presented to the president, that now for him, he has ventured into bulb making, light making, a fresh, and even now he processes honey. That is the process which the government would adopt. What's the implication? That it widens the tax base. It makes a trader build capacity to be our own investor than foreign investor. Uh, sometimes in several engagements, I give an example. Uh, like personally, I've invested in two medical facilities, in two schools, in two agriculture, but I'm ordinary trader. So we could have that chance of formulating a very strong and vibrant industrial policy that how do we transform Musoke? So the moment there is a bigger gap of communication, when the Chinese have circled the president and the manufacturers, 
because they have to protect their interest. Mm. Why could the president meet the traders who are the majority? And, uh, and by the way, they are strong, they are very strong partners in this economy. That's why we decided the political approach, I'm so open. Right. We, des we designed it because we had tried all avenues. And, and I'm telling you, this mm. is Uganda. The moment you think that the systems are so effective, then you cannot operate in Uganda. <laughs> you go to the minister who cannot even understand, he has never operated a small shop. Mm. You, and he's the minister of trade. Leave Mr. Mwebesa for him, is in private sector. But we have been talking to some of the commissioners. They don't know the challenges which a businessman goes through even to acquire a loan. Let me give you an example. Mm. The full chairman of Casita, I struggled one time uh, because I was one of the bigger importers of electronics. So I decided to, to see that can I set up a plant where I can start assembling TVs, mobile phones, and others. So what is the implication? That you need capital. And in Uganda, access to long-term financing is a very big challenge. When by this, sometimes I get annoyed when I hear people praising Uganda Development Bank. There is no money that side. And even the way it was set up is more of Uganda Commercial Bank. It aims at maximizing profits. So it's for sure it's not Uganda Development it's Bank. It's not that help you. Uh, you know, it's not helping. That is it, would be, it would be a partner mm. for development where but you do a first of third years, pays more taxes, and our economy. That is, let me ask you, and, and I'm really uh, glad that you uh, admit that um, it's, it's politics at play and you must apply the political card. But the 7th of May meeting, President Jerome Seven is going to is not going to speak to five thousand traders. He's not going to hear from each and every one, even if he did and there was time. There's more than twenty four hours. Um, even if there was more than twenty four hours in in the day, I don't think that the issues are different than you than those that you presented yesterday. So what is different? No, m mainly. Don't you think that you scored enough yesterday? Uh, no, it's not enough. First of all, we have to show the president that we have the capacity to mobilize. Uh, secondly, he has to know that the traders are one of the major stakeholders mm. for this economy. Uh, thirdly, by the way, th there are people who need even to meet the president. Yesterday, people were crying that they just want to look at the president. <laughs> I'm telling you this. <laughs> people were attacking us seriously. <laughs> and you know what puzzled me? I know some comrades for sure mm. who I know, <laughs> who are in FDC, but they were struggling to be included on the list. You know, meeting the president is not something so easy, mm. but it helps to know the minds. And he, as the head of the state, mm. he can strategize means of improving the mindset and even the capacity of these people. By the way, just imagine, if the president can meet around 1,000 traders and you turn them into investors, what is the implication to this economy? That gentleman will be so happy that the taxes have improved. The tax base has improved. You really so want to turn them into investors is that as the leadership that of Kasita? That is a strategy. Or, or, or your strategy is to no, turn no, them into no, voters? No, no, I'm telling you this. To turn them into personally, voters. Personally, Musoke, who is here, I'm mm. telling you, I started as a hawker. I have a shop. I have two medical facilities in Mukono. I have three schools. I have now a bakery. So what is that? I've transformed. I'm an investor. Mm. Le so le th the moment... The, the president and the government doesn't value a trader. Mm. Who is the future investor in Uganda? All right. Are we the so Chinese? Are we donating so our economy to foreigners? So the capacity so to mobilize. Yes, yeah, so, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a good move. That when the government is planning, mm. they know when this force can go to opposition, what will happen? It's an indictment on the leadership of Kasita uh, right from uh, the top level that... Uh, the traders might not necessarily believe what you tell them, then they need to hear from the president, from the horse's mouth. No, no, it's no, an indictment on you no, as no, the no, leadership no, of no, Kasita. No, no, no. The fact is, I've told you mm. that so many people want to meet the president. Even I've seen very big guys. I've told you, I do, I do represent the traders mm. on the presidential CEO forum. Okay, so just even meeting the president can excite people. But okay, okay the so good th thing for us, to, our to, move to calm their tempers and be able to operate normally as they wait for long-lasting solutions, the meeting with the president is um, uh, exactly I, what I, that. I want to present this. Mm. We had a strategy of making sure that we, the leaders, also we win trust in our 
in our traders mm. to show that we are transparent. I hear mm. when journalists go there for you, you come with black en- brown envelopes. Mm. But we, when we go there, the president knows the traders, we were running this economy. We don't get a single coin. So we wanted the more traders are involved in this engagement. You know, when you go there, there is no money. Mm. We champion our cause. Mm. So because the trader, you're not supposed to ask the president for money. We need a very conducive okay. business environment mm. so that we can strive and meet mm. our obligation. Okay, just to clear the air, uh, the way the traders think that you go there and get money is the way you think journalists go there and get money. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> I don't know about the brand envelopes for the journalists. <laughs> uh, Mark, uh, honestly, what is the 7th May meeting going to achieve that uh, the traders... And I'm, I'm so glad that Stadius is so honest. <laughs> uh, Kevin, uh, that is a very interesting question. Uh, but I believe the prate of the traders goes beyond the aspect of taxation because uh, I, I think it has just been a trigger to to what the public is uh, is actually facing. And, and I think uh, f- for, for the first time, I think all of us as Ugandans should con- congratulate ourselves because now we are understanding the impact of fiscal policy mm. on the ordinary lives. Because yeah. uh, for long, civil society has been calling on people to join the, the move, to mm. join uh, the movement, to, to involve themselves in the police, uh, policy formulation processes, and people have been neglecting it. But going back to your question. But, uh, but now finally everyone gets it. Now everyone gets the test of what we've been actually asking for because mm. If you get part into the process of formulating the policy, that means by the time the policy comes in, you're going to embrace it because you understand the value behind it. But in absence of people understanding where that thing uh, comes from, one, if government is to benefit anything out of that meeting, is one, there there needs to be an assurance from the president around the stability and certainty of the tax regime. Because uh, when you look at the issues that the traders are raising up, uh, today you'll give me a different uh, customs duty uh, like assessment. Tomorrow you'll give me another one. Today you'll give me a top up. As I'm leaving the border points to, to reach Kampala, I'm going to get three top ups. So all those things need to be resolved so that a person that is doing trade knows that if I'm to import goods worth 100 million, I'm paying certainly 25 million mm. by the time they reach my shop. So those are the issues that they need to be looking at. Uh, the introduction of IFRIS, let us, not, let us be honest with one another, it is not new, in, even in a, on international landscape. Ghana implemented it, uh, Tanzania said it in 2005, Kenya said it in 2010, Rwanda 2021. The unfortunate bit for Uganda was, at the time when it was introduced, mm. COVID hit. Now, as it was envisioned to streamline trade and how business is supposed to be conducted, that constraint of people being locked out affected it because by the time you come in and someone is as- actually asking for your trade secrets, how are you con- uh, conducting business? I want to access, I want to get to know how business is moving. There was that fear among the people because perhaps the tax morale as well is not as accurate as it's supposed to be. So if also uh, the meeting is to be fruitful, government needs to fast track the, the, imp- uh, the drafting of the regulations that are going to govern competition. Because if you're having cases where you're having a trader, uh, like an investor, dominating the entire value chain, in absence of a law that is actually supposed to govern that, Mm. then that means that issue is not going to be resolved. So that means strategies have to be deliberate to uh, to, to, to look at the underlying factors. On the issue of the tax exemptions and uh, and the incentives that are being given, uh, I know for a fact that the ministry has a plan uh, that is the tax expenditure governance framework and also the rationalization plan of how the, the tax exemptions are supposed to be governed. So if you're to cause the fairness amongst the different people, one, revise the thresholds of investment for local traders or for the local investor. Because if you're telling me that a person to enjoy the tax holidays and the uh, incentives, you need 300,000 uh, 300, US dollars. In your account. How many of us can afford that? Mm. Because the investors that are coming into the country, you're dealing with investors that have access to credit at 2%. You at the, at the, at, the, at the, like bank of, uh, like a commercial bank rate, it's around 25%. So those need to be uh, revised and regulated because without you dealing with the fundamentals, even if you have several meetings with the president, with the ministry, with URA, 
there are other underlying factors that are beyond taxation that need to be addressed. The budget allocation towards private sector development. You cannot tell me that you're trying to transform the economy from uh, a raw material-based kind of export to manufacturing and value added a value addition and yet the manufacturing budget is getting as little as i think around 600 billion or 600 you get it so there needs to be the deliberate move of government to invest where in a, in sectors where the economy is going to thrive in sectors whereby if you're investing in maybe the basubos if you're investing in the people to come and invest in uganda they're going to generate acti economic activity that is going to generate income that you're going to be charging on the tax that is the only way through which you're going to distribute the tax burden across the different sectors and the different players. Mm. If, if this is not addressed, it's going to become very difficult. You're still going to come and infringe on the people that are formerly registered, like, uh, for example, with their employees. Because if I'm paying close to 30% or 40% of my income in taxes, and you have a person under the presumptive regime paying just 200000 in a year, but they're making close to $50 million, that creates some sort of that the, the imbalance. imbalances mm. in the tax burden and also the impact that he's talking about i'm feeling a greater impact on my salary and a trader perhaps vis-a-vis -vis all the other expenses that they're incurring perhaps they're facing a small a small impact so you also the, the meeting also needs to give a guarantee to people i believe uh, for i don't want to use the word political but i believe this meeting is going to create some sort of sanity and some sort of assurance to the trader that yes we are actually listening we mm. want to resolve your problems, but there are certain issues that we need to address that are underlying so that we can facilitate trade, we can facilitate how revenue is actually generated. You know, it's interesting how the president really decided to work on this. One, he goes into a meeting. I don't know whether he did consult, but he says after the meeting that he will consult. Mm. I mean, the issues of the traders have been on since last year. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Over the years, but I think they became more prominent last year and towards um, the start of this year. And then all of a sudden, he says he's going to meet the traders again. And, and after the meeting with the Minister of Finance and other co um, stakeholders, and I am sure he's not going to come with solutions on that day. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we requested him for that bigger, bigger meeting. Yeah. Yes. I, I want to believe for that the traders to look at the president. Okay. I, I want to believe. Not that even so that they can raise their concerns. Uh, they elected to the head of state mm. but that's why they have leadership so so that means also we need to instill to them. Uh, public trust in our institutions mm. because if every small matter that is happening to every stakeholder Ends has to be resolved in the office of the president mm. that means the institutions themselves need to be checked right thank you mark um taxman <laughs> Uh, peter i want to bring in here you are at the extreme end of um this entire chain but it is important to you how the entire process runs. Uh, when we talk about, for example, the investors and giving them licenses, I know you're not responsible for this, and they end up hawking, create competition for um, our small and medium enterprises, but also most importantly, lifting the VAT threshold. Is it important that um, perhaps on top of just collecting taxes that you immensely involve yourselves in trying to grow these businesses as opposed to milking them I, isn't it actually to your advantage you're absolutely very right of course to it's to our advantage that uh, these businesses uh, we support them to grow and uh, one of the things that we pledge to do and which we have been trying to do if you have been very keen to notice especially for the last three years with uh, this is the message that our commissioner general has been preaching we are open to engaging our taxpayers and we are also open to finding ways of how best we can support them can I most of these things you see our traders uh when they were complaining that we did not give them enough time but uh, on record ifris started uh in july 2020 mm -hmm. and uh, of course we started with a series of engagements here and there but just like any other system that comes in in place it has challenges those challenges are not only on the trader side, even on the URA side. I can also tell you we have had challenges with our systems, and uh, in most cases we have also apologized to our taxpayers. Uh, and uh, of recent, we also changed our system uh, to revamp it more so that it can be more, uh, more interactive. 
Now, uh, when you bring a new system, there are challenges that are prone to happen. One, because you're looking at change. Uh, change is received, uh, <laughs> it is not received positively by any human nature on both the taxpayer side and the taxman side. So this calls for a lot, a lot that needs to be done on both ends. Uh, one of the things that uh, uh, I want to point out, uh, prior to this uh, canary, right now, we, we are collecting VAT uh, up to a tune of around 3.5 million. That's what we managed to collect last financial year. Now, VAT is a consumption tax, and it is tax that we would believe that at least each and every Ugandan would have a share. It is the most unfair tax I think I've uh, not not come not, of. No, the not most really, unfair. but the most yes, yeah, the yeah. most regressive. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm. We would believe that the fact that it's a consumption tax, by the time someone buys just a sweet in a supermarket, they have also paid a small share of that tax. That's the what we would want the to. Thing, the thing is, if I buy one believe. liter of cooking now. oil, mm. I'll pay 18% of the one liter. Exactly. If I buy 10 liters of mm. oil, I'll pay 18% of the 10 liters. So mm. me, who is a small consumer and mm. can only afford one liter of oil, and I have to buy it every day, it means mm. that I'm paying 18% exactly. every other day. Now, but what is happening currently? VAT contributes around 15% when you look at our collection. Of course, we collect other taxes. When you look at the composition of the taxes that we have collected, you see the contribution of VAT still minimal mm. amidst all the challenges that are happening, even confirming what you're saying that indeed people are paying and they are feeling the burden out there. So why is it that the contribution is still low? Of course, we have other direct taxes like uh, income tax, personal income tax, that we are collecting a huge sum of money from. But simply because maybe uh, one, you'd, you'd urge it out that for it, when you look at the, the administration of, of, for example, personal income tax, it may be a bit cheaper mm. and easier to collect. But why is it that? I want us to ask our, ourselves this question. Why is it that, yes, everyone is paying VAT out there, claims to be paying, claims to be feeling the impact and the burden, but why is it that it is contributing less? Why is it that it's contributing 15%? Why not increase it up to like 20, 25, like our colleagues in the sub-Saharan region? Now, those are the challenges that we need now to sit and reflect. And I believe when we have such discussions with the traders, we can always come up, at least it's fair, that we understand why. And as URA, one of the things that we pointed out when we were introducing this system, because we, we noted a, a, a revenue gap, especially in terms of collection. Some people charge VAT and they do not remit it. You, have, you go to a restaurant, for example, to have a meal, they give you an invoice that they have charged you 18%. But because they know that you're a final consumer, mm. you're not going to go to URA and you claim the input tax. Now, the when they are filing their return, they are at liberty to exclude that mm, and declare only that VAT that they are charging from the registered taxpayers, the ones that they know that we are going to cross-reference right. and find. Now, when you have such challenges and you think of a system like IFRIS, because the way IFRIS works, irrespective of who has purchased from you, even if it is you, Canary, that has gone to a restaurant, you have had a glass of juice, the moment you're given this invoice, this trader has no option but to declare whatever he has charged from you. Even if it is 200 shillings, they must declare. Now, okay. With, uh, with, with, with all this, of course, with the support, we are hoping that the 3.5 trillion that we are collecting mm. is going to double to around 7 trillion. So long as, yes, so long as we work together. That one and I can assure you. And, 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 and I think like Tadia said earlier, mm. they have no problem paying the tax. The anger comes in mm. that uh, perhaps like any other Ugandan, they don't see where this money is going. Mm. There is no value for that money. Let's take a break, but also in return, we'll discuss why are you collecting tax and holding um, guns on the necks of these traders? Why are you so harsh as Uganda Revenue Authority? All that after this short commercial break.
106.1 Next Radio. This is uh, the big talk, and uh, we're looking into the issues of the traders. Yesterday, President Chair Museveni did meet them and uh, passed some resolutions. What I want to say today is that these resolutions are only temporarily in the nature I look at them. But the other issue that uh, really was a point of discussion is that um, Uganda Revenue Authority, the taxman, collects tax from the traders with a smoking gun. Peter Tweskamkama here is a supervisor of domestic taxes at Uganda Revenue Authority. Peter, why do you do that? <laughs> well, for starters, uh, one, I want to state clearly here that uh, the penalties are not there to collect, uh, to, to enrich URA with a lot of revenue. These penalties were not put in place to enable URA to hit its targets. No, it's not true. I, I would believe that just like any other pani- penalties that people put in place. Peter, I, I, I talked about enforcement, not the mm. penalties. Okay, enforcement. Still, still it's the same. It's the same. Even enforcement. Mm. It's not that we want to use the iron hand. Canary, you're aware, aware that the regime that we operate is 100% self-declaration. Right from importation. You import, the agent will declare on your behalf. Yes. You're going to file a return. It's you to file a return way before you are a e comes in. Now, uh, where these challenges have come in, hmm? I want to give you a brief history. When we rolled out IFRIF, uh, of course, like I told you, July 2020, we started with teaching this business community. We started with uh, trying to make sure that we bring them on board, tell them what they're expecting. Now, of course, we were hit with COVID challenges, but uh, even when we were rolling out, we rolled out in phases, especially for the traders that we have on our system to system uh, method of raising these invoices. Mm. Now, for the enforcement part, we started with deploying our officers at some of these uh, trade uh, trade centers. For example, we get an officer, we tell him to go to a supermarket and try to observe and see indeed what's happening, what are the challenges, and also see indeed if the traders are taking it up. Mm. Now, what would happen? When we look at the trends, for example, you see the trend of uh, a, a certain shop or supermarket. You see that during the day, they were issuing invoices. But now after eight, <laughs> between <laughs> like when eight, the left. <laughs> exactly, between <laughs> like eight and, and, and 11, mm. and that's when our officers definitely, the, they're also retiring. Now you see there's no invoice that has been issued. Now you keep asking yourself, amidst all the challenges mm. Mm, mm. of system failure, power failure, and by the way, our, uh, some that system has an offline mode uh, canary. In case of power failure, this same system, I- I sometimes you, you're able to issue an offline mode, on offline mode. Now, we, we noted that uh, for, for uh, that trend, we noted that some of these taxpayers, they wait for our officers to withdraw, and now they start issuing invoices so of as a response, system. As a response, now, you hold your mm. boots and the guns, like counterterrorism has its own unit uh, uh, or, or environment police, you're about mm. to ask your now for, uh, for own unit as you are in police to enforce. No, I'm trying they to show you where we came from by the time we reached there. It's not that we picked up mm. uh, our enforcement guns and we say, no, we are going to deploy at the shops in Chikuba and make sure that by the time you move out, you must have an IFRIS invoice. No, we mm. did not uh, start from there. But uh, no, what I'm saying is that mm. here, Peter, look at this. One, mm. the system costs one point two or 1.1 million shillings, the list, mm. the, the, the system. The electronic fiscal yes. devices. Number two, mm. um, if I'm illiterate, I'll have to employ someone to use it. Mm. Number three, mm. um, like I think Marco or Tadia said, yes, fast, fast, mm. business is really moving fast in Chukubo. We have no time to punch these things in the system. Mm. How do you expect me? Now, uh, to correct you, mm. uh, the system, it's not true that it, it is 1.2 million. We have different modes of uh, uh, different modes and channels of the system. The 1.1, 1.2 million only relates to the electronic fiscal devices, the devices that you see people using, especially those with root cells. We thought that it would be easier for them. But we have uh, a system uh, that is open to the general public, which is now the, uh, through the URA, web portal, which is free of charge. Of course, like you're saying, I understand you need internet for it to raise. You need Some internet. Yes, sometimes yeah the yeah system yeah. is off. Yeah, you may need the internet. The portal is yes. off. You can't access it. We, we understand those challenges. And, and look, as, and as a response, URA mm. turns up in a shop 
with a gun. Mm. We have also <laughs> noted that <laughs> <laughs> we have also noted that uh, one the challenges with IFRI seem to be operational. Mm. They seem to be with o- they seem to be operational. It's not that the traders are not taking it up. They seem to be operational like you're stating it here. Maybe like you're saying that the system sometimes system failure, they have issues the way we are enforcing on uh, uh, on the operations, but we are saying look here. We can work together. Mm? You don't have to wait for the of for the officer to come to your shop, for example, to make sure that they stand there and force you to issue an IFRIS invoice. No. But uh, when we look at the trends, before we came in, uh, our traders need to understand that we have also advanced in our data analysis. Right from the time you purchase these items, we have already noted that you have purchased some of these some of these items. So what happens if one month, two months, three months, mm. we see that there's nothing that is coming coming from you? That's why we started with spot checks. Mm. He didn't talk about it, but we also did it, whereby we would come and see, okay, we, we are here to, to know what is happening. We see that you're purchasing, but there's nothing that is coming out. All you're doing, you're claiming whatever you, you're buying, but we are not seeing anything that, that you're selling. Okay. So. The, 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 mm. the other thing that I thought we should talk about, and mm. maybe um, Tadius will correct me, it is uh, the fact that the penalties have become so lucrative for officers of VRA. Number one, mm-hmm. they um, are very, very happy to issue a penalty um, every after, um, you know, um, two days. Mm. And if the penalties are c- accumulate to 20 million, they are happy to walk away with 2 million that the officers in the field that you sent there to collect tax mm. are doing exactly the opposite. They are collecting tax, but for themselves. Well, that's unfortunate. And uh, But are you aware of it? Uh, well, our staff compliance office uh, sometimes receives those complaints, mm. but we are also asking the general public, because you well know that uh, you are a now, especially under the, the, new, the new management, the zero tolerance to corruption, and uh, what we always uh, emphasize and ask our taxpayers, don't be shy, don't be cheated. You know your rights. If someone is demanding money from you, then, and you also go ahead and you pay it, then you, you're not any different from this person. Mm. Uh, sometimes you may have to use other available channels okay. that uh, you may push through so that you, you, you don't have to be cheated. In the meeting yesterday, mm. the traders accused you of failing to collect, um, um, to enforce all the good elements of tax. That tax um, should be fair and transparent. Tax mm. should be easily collectible. Tax should promote fairness and equity. It should be certain and stable. It should be neutral and productive. Mm. Uganda Revenue Authority, where you sit, does the exact opposite. Uh, Canary. Uh, one of the things because by the time you apply a gun, mm. it means that first of all the tax is not easily collectible. <laughs> one one of the things that uh, I have personally noted, uh, our traders, the fact that uh, we are in an informal sector, they they themselves are not willing to to pay tax, mm. and <laughs> and <laughs> and and uh, this also stems from the fact that. They they are at liberty to self declare mm. on their own. Mm. Up to now, I can assure you, we still have traders who will spend two years, three years, minus filing a return, minus declaring any transaction that has come through okay. through their businesses. Now, how would you expect? Hmm? How do you expect you are to address some of those challenges? We have always engaged, and uh, one of the things that we do at the authority, at least our traders have complained that we send them messages. Some have even complained that we overcall them. We have tried. Yes, we have tried to do that. Some have complained that they receive four letters on a daily basis from the entity, from URA. Now, if you're even complaining that the information is too much, it means, yes, you're aware of what you're supposed to do, but you're deliberately refusing to do it. Okay. Let's look at the comments here. Bunyoro, mm. NRM aggrieved youth. <laughs> That's <laughs> the hand of the account. Says, good morning, Canary. Thanks for the show. President Chairman Seveni was very right. He didn't say that the traders should not pay taxes. He said that the system of IFRI should not be put on halt for further assessment. Even the traders didn't say that IFRI is a new tax. Okay. Sally Vincent says, some of the rural traders don't understand that system. 
Uh, Remba Stephen says, how best are we going to pursue this issue pertaining our nation as traders? Mudisha Edward says, corruption is everywhere, so we must learn to live with it. Thanks for uh, thanks traders for the milestone made yesterday re regarding tax issues. And um, mm -hmm. well, right, okay, there's some uh, strange language here, <laughs> quite harsh. Uh, now, uh, Canary, there's mm. something that I wanted to raise, eh? mm. especially still looking at IFRIS. Uh, we know that the traders sometimes they feel that we are not being fair, that we are targeting them, especially in an event where you find you are registered for VAT, for example, mm. and your neighbor is not registered for VAT. Mm. Now, when we were introducing this system, we thought that, one, this is going to help us. We have a lot of Bairibi mm, mm. in Chukuvo, in town. You find someone is having a very small shop, for example, mm, very small, paying rent of uh, 200000 Right. But he has a big store somewhere that is hidden that you can't even know. Now, in such a, s a, a circumstance, when our traders, uh, when we are interacting with our traders, we may think that this person is a presumptive taxpayer, mm -hmm. a small business taxpayer, not knowing that indeed he is also huge. Now, when we are registering people, you find we have registered the neighbor and this other one we have not. Now, when we brought this system, this is how we thought that, and we believe that this system is going to work. Now, this person, when they are buying whatever they are buying from you, who is a wholesaler, please, we are asking you, capture at least the name of this person. If you can get the phone number, please capture the phone number. If you can get the TIN, please capture it. But in the absence of the TIN, we are asking you, give us the names and the phone number. And this is what normally happens. We have, we do trend analysis. Mm. This same system is able to give us that information that will show us that Kanare Mugume has been purchasing such and such huge sums of stock from this person. You see how we are able now to identify someone who has been off the radar on our side, but using the purchases side right. of the same of the same system. And this is how I believe we are going to trickle down to those people that you you you're saying that one we are not targeting, mm. and the ones that you're saying that are not feeling the burden. And at the end of the day, definitely we shall register a, a greater improvement, especially in our tax base, and uh, we shall eventually raise uh, raise our tax to GDP which we are struggling to. All right. Mm -hmm. um, Tadius, why are the people you represent so dishonest? But answer that after this short one-minute break. <laughs> Stay put. We need, we need a political, a political consensus. This discussion is a fact of all of us. And she, how, how you get there is wrong. Right. How best are we going to correct, to correct uh, things, uh, things which are happening behind our backs? Back. And here, and here at Next Radio, we take that very, very seriously. If you're, if you're looking for quality debate, do power account and get getting to the bottom of every issue. Catch the big talk with Canada Mayor every Saturday to 11 a.m. Only on Next Radio. 106.1 Next Radio, this is The Big Talk. And in the studios this morning, uh, we are talking about uh, the details of the meeting with the president and the traders. Tadias Musoke is the chairperson of Kasita, Uganda, is representing the traders who are very dishonest in declaring tax. Why? <laughs> uh, but you know, that's not true. Uh, just imagine a country where it's so hard to access tax incentives when you are Ugandan. Mm. But the foreigners, who are highly protected, they are enjoying and benefiting tax incentives, free land, uh, and they, by the even, they can easily access long-term financing supported by the government. Uh, I don't want to be so political, but I'll, say, I, I'll sing out uh, an example of Vivo Hospital, uh, whereby our Ugandans have struggled to set up medical facilities, but they are not at all facilitated. They struggle and use commercial loans. Uh, so a trader who is, who is trying to survive, just imagine the cost of living in this country is totally very, uh, is, is so high. The operation costs, let me give an example like in Kampala here. You are supposed to pay for the toilet. You are supposed to pay for parking. 
the signpost, rubbish, and even license. So everything is charged, mm. even local service tax. And that and all comes even off the, mm. the profit margin is so limited. So what's the problem with Kwe here? If other investors, mm. they're enjoying the tax incentives. So if Musoke Kwe here, what does Peter lose? Because if Musoke Kwe here, I'm sorry to use this word, I, I, I'll go to the bar, I buy beer. Mm. Their taxes. Uh, I buy soda, their taxes. I buy a car, which are, which are highly taxed. Uh, I buy land, now even it's taxed. So I, I, I put up rentals, they are taxed. So they lose nothing. They will avail us with some breathing space so that we enjoy this country. And by the way, another thing I want to clarify is not that I'm supporting tax avoidance, uh, but uh, he has suggested that he is like a small shop. You think that I'm okay, he's a small trader. And then when you come, I cannot tell you that I'm going to get from, uh, from Peter. Mm. I like, you know, I have a store. I go to the next shop. So what you are always telling us, so if you create Eva, you are supposed to give the customer the receipt where you, are, where you have created from. Mm. So next time, this customer will not come to my small shop. He'll go to your shop. So we told them that we cannot accept. So we need to understand each other. Okay. Yeah. That most of Ugandans, they are still struggling. And by the way, we are still facing the effects of COVID-19. Where the government, unfortunately, allocated us the recovery fund, but which hasn't been effectively implemented. So businesses have collapsed. Uh, most of our members have migrated to the metropolitan area. Uh, even others, their property has been, as, uh, uh, has been auctioned. Even others have gone now to, to be kadamas. So the government would think about building the capacity and facilitating the private sector mm. to stabilize. Uh, I was so happy when you asked him, what's wrong with uh, URA uh, facilitating business development? Mm. Uh, because when, when you take good care of the cow, you find that the result, it will give you better milk. What they say is that this is not within their but mandate. But you have milk, but you cannot facilitate. Well, when Musok is making profits, you are so happy. Mm. When Musok is collapsing, you cannot intervene. Even bill outs need to be collected. That's why, my friend, you had to see the big man. You cannot get bill outs if you are not connected to the big man. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the, what's wrong with being also political? Mm. When you've been near f mere power, ah, you, you never know the <laughs> <in your laughs> there are so many benefits. Mm. Uh, so so th the fact is, you know, at times you have to be so open. Mm. Some people can understand. That's why Kasita in the petition, we made uh, other recommendations. Can the government set up st a startup fund to facilitate the youth who have just completed university, who are, un uh, who are unemployed? Mm. Can you give them some breathing space to break even? But why do you facilitate investors? So that we widen the tax base. Can you come out and we, we set up a special fund which can build out companies which are struggling, who are not connected, because no one can see the big man. You find even advisors, even who cannot fix an appointment to the big man. I don't know when do they advise, even the ministers. Mm. So we need to ease the processes of access to capital. We need to ease up the process of bill outs. Just imagine, one time I was processing like a small loan, yeah, I don't want to be so exact about the amount. Some people may think that that's big money. <laughs> but the security I had to render to the bank is around $5 billion. But the car loan was just 200, 200 million. Mm. So you, the security you give that is too big. Mm. And when you have issues, just within one month, you are issued a notice. The bank is selling your property. I have so many cases I'm handling. Mm. The bank is selling the property. You went there to, to expand your business, but you're collapsing. And even you are losing what you have already struggled to set up. So by the way, this is so important uh, that even the guys whom we used to admire in the private sector, if they were not so highly connected, mm. by this time their business empire would have collapsed. Let me ask you, Tadia. So, so we need 
to see that we can advise the government. And unfortunately, uh, when, when, when we saw so many challenges and we tried to approach the MPs, we could ask you, hello, the traders, you people, you have money. Go collect at least 200 million. We present your concern to parliament. So when I tried to contest, I lost. <laughs> 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 but we thought that the private sector the members need of to parliament ask you for money to advocate. That they do it. For your rights. They do it. That's why we thought that why can the private sector be represented mm. in parliament? Now I get it why manufacturers, you want to the so Manufacturers have so many problems. Mm. Farmers have so many problems. Traders have so many problems. How many members of parliament shall we have? No, even no, no, even no, us no, journalists no, no, will, but, will, will, will request but, but, but a representative. We, and by the way, sir, I, I used to be a journalist, mm. a senior journalist. Mm. I know the challenges where media houses even don't pay journalists. Mm. We know that. That's why even in press conferences, we facilitate them. You find someone yawning the whole day without even taking <laughs> lunch. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, I'm, so, I'm so open because I have to advocate for journalists. Because I was in journalism, journalism for over 18 years, mm. I know the issues that side. Mm. But if we don't come out openly, let me give you an example. Maintaining such a media house, the tax issues, they are so huge. Maintaining a radio station is very terrible. So you find that the company needs to say to stay on air, but again, it needs people to be on air. Mm. So you find that even after COVID, most of the media houses are not paying journalists. Mm. We know it. So there are issues which we need to address so that we harmonize and strengthen the private sector. By the way, that's why most of the media houses, we are concerned with these issues. When the taxes are so high, you are meeting your tax obligation, you, you, you have loan uh, issues, how will you survive? So URA needs to engage more of the private sector. And by the way, also I need to clarify this. We have discovered uh, there, are, there are so many organizations which pretend to be the apex bodies and we are not represented so well. So that's why this time we said, as Casita, let mm. us leave our differences with other associations. Mm. Let us join and fight to, 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 to save the traders. That's why all those other organizations, they are nowhere. One time when they came, they told me, Chair, please come, we have a press conference. When I read the prayer press release, it was so like contradicti contradicting from what the traders' position was. Who, so who, 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 who knows the accurate position of the traders? It's in your introduction, you said in the meeting there was Casita, there was Futa. We are not part of Futa. I said, uh, but I thought you're advocating for the same people. Uh, uh, yes, but you know, it depends. The other one, Futa. Mm. And now currently, what is their issues? It's the Ministry of Trade, which is supposed to establish an apex body. Mm. That's totally in the constitution. But all these other associations... Do, do, by, by fighting within yourselves, don't you lose focus? Uh, no, no, no. Now, like, for this issue, we came together. We came together. And then another approach for Casita, we have to first engage the government mm. and dialogue. We champion that before demonstrating. That's why other demonstrations which were organized, I came out strongly and I opposed them. Yeah. Uh, because we have built structures throughout the country. Mm. But we, we were questioning... Why are these guys so interested in demonstrating before waiting and giving space for the government to formulate fair interventions? Mm. And then we gave them some good time. Now for the kilos, we have tried to, advoca to advocate for, 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 for revisiting this, uh, this system for right. three years. Now for, for the Chinese, it's almost a year plus. So you have to give government some time and then demonstration and then uh, nowadays, uh, I think the demonstration is so good. Mm. The government champions and intervenes with urgency. Right. It looks like it's, just, it's the only <laughs> language that <laughs> they do listen to. <laughs> but, but, but before I let you go, I want to ask this last question. Um, when you engage, I mean, you broke at the meeting with the president through an, an official channel. Uh, because in the structures of government, Hajat Namiaro does, d does not exist in her office. It exists only in the party. Actually, even in the party, I don't know why it falls. But that's not the point. The point is, you engage with the Ministry of Trade, you engage with the Ministry of Finance, you engage with, with everyone in Parliament who are asking you for money to advocate for what you are fighting for. 
they don't get the point. What I don't understand is that these are the same people who, one, are your lenders downtown. These are the same people who are actually having different businesses downtown. What I don't understand is that why don't they get the point? Why does it have to end with the president? Uh, no, currently, most of them, by the way, they understood our points. Mm. Uh, some but their of hands them, were tied? Uh, some, some of them thought we just want to avoid paying taxes. Mm. And by the way, as we Ugandans, we are willing to pay taxes. Mm. Uh, that's why even when we are presenting yesterday, we asked the president, what happened with Kampala? Almost 75% of the taxes are being got from Kampala. What is happening with us? What's happening with our roads? But when you go out of Kampala, you find that the roads and the infrastructure is so good. So also, we need to make sure that our taxpayers get value for money. Just imagine oh, oh, when, when, when you are on that road, you find that people even who don't pay taxes, uh, they are enjoying the road so much that every time you are seeing a lead car, they are chasing the tax man away, the taxpayer away. So we need to harmonize mm. and respect the private sector. When you make, when you benchmark with other countries, they highly respect the private sector. Right. Uh, that's why in Uganda here, most of the people they are championing politics. Reason: When you go into politics, you see someone improving well mm. so quickly. <laughs> and for us here, we are struggling in need in these small cars with loans, a lot of stress. Mm. So with, with small loans of two hundred yes, million. We <laughs> We, we, no, we need to make sure uh, that we have a very vibrant private sector right. so that the taxman can even meet his targets with ease. Mm. But the moment people are preferring politics to private sector, which is supposed to support our budget, then there is a serious problem which we need to address as, this na as, as, as a nation. All right. In, in 30 seconds, your parting shot. Way uh, forward. I, I want to thank... All, all, all our members, the traders, who stood so strongly, uh, Solida was so strong. I want to thank URA officials uh, for sure they told us, Sigara Kumulamwa, mm. you are right. We have to, to champion. You know, this one's our friends. Mm. He's in URA, but you may find a sister in Chikubu. Mm. <laughs> Let me hope I'm not bringing problems. <laughs> so you can find some. There's nothing illegal there. So. <laughs> so you may find now, like, let me give an example. Somewhere attacking us now. You see, we have brought politics. Why is VSJ also supporting you? But VSJ has relatives who are in business. Mm. Bobby Wine has relatives who are in business. Mm. Uh, I, I, I got, uh, it, uh, you know, there is a way also it strengthened our advocacy. When the Minister of Kampala told us that uh, the sister was telling her, hello, the loans are on my neck. Even business is down. So I think everyone is concerned because traders are mm. the majority in this country, by them more than even industries. Mm. Uh, because we play a very vital role. Okay. In this who was fueling the guys taxes. who were burning tires? No, no, no. For us as Kasita, we are totally very and we we don't we don't support violent acts. Mm. Our demonstration was supposed to be so peaceful. And by the way we tried to avoid politics as, as possible. Mm. Uh, most of the opposition leaders were calling us, can we come on board? We told them no please <laughs> we are let us avoid uh, being so political in this engagement or demonstration. And even we appeal to our members, please just close your shop, stay at home. Mm. Let's see how police will come and tear gas uh, you have from you, Have home. you tried to understand where this was coming from? Because you think uh, uh, non we, 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 we But we at the same time, I, I don't understand. Uh, we, there we were we arrests we made. We, we are trying to investigate. We are coordinating with all security agencies. Mm. And by the way, at times, you know, you never know. There may be some s sympathizers who wanted to join. But for us, our stand was, it was supposed to be a very peaceful demonstration. Okay. Thaddeus, many thanks. Uh, Mark, uh, way forward, your parting shot. Uh, my way forward, I think, uh, <coughs> it has to come in two fronts. One, uh, on the part of government, I think they need to do whatever they have to do to change the public perception mm, in regards mm. to how the enforcement is happening and how the money is actually being used. Right. Because if 
if you do not take up that angle, it's going to become very different. Uh, secondly, from no, the no, part of no, here, no offense to the people who use the Nigeria road, but if you use that road and then you go to Chukubo mm. and, and face the gun and, and then come back Th- and then there's no power. Yes. Hmm? So the public perception needs to be changed. On the part of URA, let them enforce their uh, client service charter mm. where it is possible that government also establish an uh, tax ombudsman so that they can uh, also cater for the for the claims or the complaints that uh, the different uh, actors have and then also let us respect the revenue cycle mm. let us allocate our money very well let us utilize our money very well and then let us mobilize our money very well so that everyone is inclusive everyone is part of the cycle and everyone can account for how much taxes they're giving and the dishonesty well, for the dishonesty part, <laughs> that's really a tricky one, but let us really, as the business community as well, try, one, understand what taxes are supposed to do, mm. how how and when you're supposed to be filing your taxes, and just be as try to be as honest as possible, because if you fail to do that, when Peter comes in to collect his taxes, <laughs> he's not going to be smiling, because that is the essence of the of the penalties. Right. The unfortunate bit is how they're being administered. The person comes to you, they give you a penalty, and they expect you to pay it in three days. So m- maybe th- people also need to educate themselves with what the law says, mm. so that when your A comes with that glaring face of we are scaring you, then you can also pull out your card and like, no, you're not supposed to be doing that. Mm. Yes. So uh, at all fronts, people need to learn, people need to engage more constructively. Let us have an harmony. Let us use taxes as a tool of also developing trade. Right, glaring face. Interesting, the faces they send us to TV. What the traders face downtown (laughs) 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 are completely different. (laughs) (laughs) Peter Taxman, you have the last word on the show. Uh, Thank you so much, Canary. And uh, one, uh, to to our dear taxpayers and the general public at Mm. large, let us not abuse the self-assessment regime. Uh, One, if you uh, declare your taxes and you declare your returns and you file and pay on time, Trust me, you may never even see the tax man on your door. Uh, two, we take any dialogue and uh, any criticism positively. Uh, sorry, um, I have to take you back a little mm. bit. It's not true that if you actually file all your returns, you mm. never see the tax man on your door. As I said, I know you have a desk where you know all these complaints are adjusted, but the tax man always be on the trader's doors. Uh, canary officially <laughs> and unofficially. Canary, th- we, we, we even have a specific category of taxpayers whereby even at the point of importation, whatever you bring in, whatever you declare to us, we take it, that is it. Mm. Yes, and because we have, yes, <laughs> because we have <laughs> developed <laughs> trust, yes. Because it contradicts we have what you said earlier because, because you because said we have sometimes you even <laughs> assume mm. tax. Yes, sometimes, especially for people who have not given us the... The, the records, people yeah. have not filed their returns, but we have the economic operators that we authorize to, especially to give them that treatment, if because we have developed a level of trust If I brought here with these taxpayers. representatives from uh, the mm. bonds and, and the guys who impo- import cars, I can they will confirm. They will confirm to this that we have the authorized economic operators. Yes, we have it. Two, like uh, uh, Tadius was expressing his concerns, mm. uh, like now we have just rolled out the withholding exemption applications. Please, we can as well grant you the exemption on withholding tax. Mm. So long as uh, your level of compliance, yes, your level of compliance is up to a certain level. So you see all these incentives that our traders, especially our local traders, would be taking part in, they are all all uh, skewed towards uh, the degree of compliance. So. Still, I would encourage them, let us not abuse the self-declaration regime. Let us do as much as possible that we can, and we declare the true and actual picture of our businesses. Now, on our side, what I can also say as URA, definitely, we pledge the dialogue, and uh, we know that, yes, sometimes we have faulted, especially with disseminating information to the very last person, and this, of course, we were able to notice it from the recent strikes with different opinions that were coming through mm. with how people were interpreting this. So we know that, yes, there's a lot of information gap that is still <coughs> lying out there. Right. And uh, what I can pledge is that we shall continue educating our taxpayers so that we can develop Uganda together. It is also unfair for me to conclude, minus just highlighting a few benefits that come along with this system of IFRIS. One of them that is uh, predominant is the pre-filled returns. 
some of our taxpayers have noted that in the past filing a return you had to first download uh, a mm. form, fill in, look for invoices, mm. Excel sheets, the computer. Automatic. But right now it is automatic. Mm. Now okay. imagine they take this up. It will eventually reduce the costs of operation because where you require the tax, where you require the tax consultant to file for you a return, now you may not even need because we already have this information okay. that how your business has been tracked has been performing. The rest of the benefits, I think um, mm. I'll, I'll send an invoice so you can pay, so we can pay tax. <laughs> 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 thank Gen you, Canary. Gentlemen, mm. I can't thank you enough for um, being able to honor our invitation and appear here on the Big Talk uh, and uh, sharing your insights. Big Talk returns on Monday, 7 to 8 p.m. here on Next Radio 106.1 AFM. My name is Canary Mgume. Good morning. 106.1 Next Radio.